Welcome to Animal A Day. Ten animals who defied nature and took flight. Every animal looks up at the birds and insects flying above them with envy. They wish they could have the same level of freedom and fun. A few animals wished harder than the rest. Their wishes were granted and they were given powers that defied nature. A snake, a frog, a fish, a lizard, some spiders, and some mammals were granted a gift. Most of these animals did not receive exactly what they wanted. They did not obtain wings. But they were given the ability to glide through the air with ease and they were happy. They could fly only down and this was enough for them. They were content. However, two of the mammals were not satisfied. They wouldn't truly be happy unless they were the masters of the sky. So they wished and wished and wished some more. The earth felt pity for these two animals and eventually decided to make a special exception. One of them was granted a body and one was given a brain. The bat had a body that could fly and was happy. And the human was happy to have the imagination and freedom to take to the sky in their own way. Anyway, enough waxing poetic. Here are facts on some of the non-bird, non-insect animals that can fly and glide. 1. Paradise Flying Snake The Paradise Flying Snake is one of five species of snake that can glide through the air. All five snakes are in the same genus. Flying snakes live in many Asian countries including Thailand, the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, and India. The Paradise Flying Snake are long, thin snakes that can grow up to 4 feet or 1.3 meters. They aren't just venomous, they're also constrictors. It's rare that a snake is both, but it's even more rare that it can glide. They spend the vast majority of their lives in trees. When they need to hunt or travel from tree to tree, they launch themselves out of one tree by first hanging off a branch in a J shape. They then use the rear of their bodies to fling themselves. They flatten their bodies by stretching their ribs out to create more surface area and propel themselves forward with a slithering movement in the air. With these aerial undulations, they can also somewhat control the direction of their flight. It's thought they could fly as far as 330 feet or 100 meters in a single go. Smaller flying snakes tend to go the furthest. 2. Wallace's Flying Frog Wallace's Flying Frog, also simply called the Gliding Frog, is one of about 380 species of frogs that can, you know, fly. Well, technically glide. Who is this Wallace, I hear you asking? The Wallace that the name is referring to is Alfred Russell Wallace, or the man that developed the idea of evolution independently of Darwin around the same time. He was one of the first people to capture and describe the frog. These amphibians are in the moss frog family and are native to Borneo, Sumatra, and the Malay Peninsula. Wallace's flying frogs are fairly small, only reaching about 4 inches or 10 centimeters long, but are actually one of the biggest flying frogs. Like paradise flying snakes, they spend most of their time in trees. They have four large webbed feet that kind of act like four small parachutes. The wide, thin layer of skin between their toes catch lots of air and let them glide over 50 feet or 15 meters. They do this to find prey or escape predators of their own. 3. Flying Fish Flying fish are an entire family of over 40 species of ray-finned fish. These creatures literally look like a normal fish with airplane wings pasted on. It's thought these fish gained this adaption to evade its numerous predators like swordfish and tuna. It's able to shoot out of the water like a missile and glide incredible distances of over 600 feet or 183 meters over the course of up to 45 seconds. Though this puts them out of the frying pan and into the fire because they become at risk of getting grabbed by birds above the surface. They live in warm tropical ocean waters around the world. 
Barbados is particularly proud of their flying fish, as it appears in many places throughout their culture, including on coins. They even call themselves the Land of the Flying Fish. Unfortunately for Barbados, overfishing has drastically reduced their numbers around there. 4. Draco Lizard Draco Lizards, also called Flying Dragons, are a genus of around 40 species of Iguanian Lizards. They have retractable flight membranes reinforced by a bunch of long, flexible rib bones. While flying, it makes them look like a mini hand glider, or Batman in flight. These little guys only reach up to 8 inches or 20 centimeters in length, and that's with their long tails. Depending on the species, their tails could be twice as long as the rest of their bodies. Draco lizards also have another smaller membrane below their jaw called a dewlap. Their tails and dewlaps help stabilize and control their direction mid-air. Like other gliders on this list, they spend the majority of their lives in trees. The main use of their wings is to quickly glide tree to tree looking for termites and ants to eat. They can also be used to attract mates or to flee predators, but usually their fast climbing skills are enough to escape them. Some accounts say that Draco lizards have been seen gliding as far as 600 feet or 183 meters in one flight, but it's more commonly agreed that they travel closer to 30 feet or 9 meters at a time. They can be found in forests in Thailand and surrounding countries, the Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore, and southern India. 5. Selenop Spiders Selenops are a genus of around 130 species of arboreal skydiving spiders. As I'm sure most of you would agree, it would be cool if these spiders had wings. Unfortunately, this is not the case. They have flat bodies that when falling can quickly enter a beneficial pose that helps them control the angle of their descent. They hold two legs forward and move their bodies in a way that lets them safely glide to the nearest tree. Unlike the rest on this list, they can't travel long distances in the air and act more like a controlled parachute than a hand glider. But it's no fluke that these spiders can maneuver in the air. An experiment in 2015 dropped 59 of these spiders high above most trees. 55 of them managed to clearly align themselves with a tree and land no problem. Other tree-dwelling spiders were dropped and did not show any discernible aerial acrobatics that got them closer to a tree. Selenops were then put in a wind tunnel and were observed putting their heads down and using quick movements of their front legs to control their aerial direction. It's thought this ability came about to get away from predators or to attack their own prey from above. They are found in many hot or dry areas in the world like Arizona, Florida, Australia, Iran, Panama, and in Africa. 6. Ballooning Spiders Other spiders can fly too, and in a completely different way. Some spider species like certain orb weavers, dwarf spiders, velvet spiders, and crab spiders do what's called ballooning. This flight technique has much less directional control than Selenops, but it makes up for it with its vastly superior potential range. They can theoretically travel thousands of miles if conditions are right. The act of ballooning starts with a spider finding a suitable high place, like in a tree or tall man-made object. It then spits out dozens of special silk threads called gossamer in the shape of a triangle from its spinneret. Then, they just wait for the wind to catch this sail, which is not that difficult. They don't even always need wind, sometimes just the Earth's natural electrostatic fields can lift a spider. Spider hatchlings perform the most ballooning because of their minuscule weight of one milligram or less, combined with their need to escape competition with their hundreds of siblings. The exception to this is some adult female spiders weighing over 100 milligrams, like a few velvet spider species. For various reasons, like to find a mate, they also use ballooning, but they make a much bigger sail. These huge adult sails can be over 36 inches squared or 91 centimeters squared and consist of hundreds of threads. As a creepy final note, there were a few instances in Australia where there were so many flying spiders that the ground was completely covered in silk and it looked like it had just snowed. 
can you imagine standing in a place with so many spiders, probably millions, heading towards you that they blotted out the sun? That sounds awesome. 7. Flying Squirrel Flying squirrels are a genus of around 50 species of gliding rodents. The size of these creatures range from a few inches to a few feet in length, with the bigger ones being comparable in size to house cats. Surprise, surprise, they live in trees. They sometimes occupy deserted bird's nests or woodpecker holes. They are found in many parts of North America and in certain places in Europe, Asia, and Central America. Interestingly, the flying squirrels in the United States have been found to glow hot pink under UV light, and it's not known why. They can glide by extending their patagia, which are thin membranes of skin and fur. Their patagium starts at their hands and connects to their feet, and continues on the other side of their feet and connects to the middle of their tails. While flying, they are able to turn 180 degrees by putting one arm down. Their wrists are supported with special cartilage unique to them that acts like another finger and spreads their patagium even further. Their tails are used to help slow down and keep their flight steady. The reason for their flying ability is debated, but it could help conserve energy while traveling in search for food, or help them quickly and safely escape danger. Their flights can take them as far as almost 300 feet or 91 meters away from where they started. 8. Sugar Glider The Sugar Glider is one of eight species of flying phalangers, which is a genus of marsupials, more specifically possums, that can glide in an almost identical way to flying squirrels. Head to tail, sugar gliders measure up to a foot or 31 centimeters, and they only weigh about 5 ounces or 140 grams. They are found near the eastern coastline of Australia, as well as in Tasmania. They get their name from the fact they have a sweet tooth. They eat a lot of sap, nectar, pollen, and fruit. They are yet another species on this list that lives in trees, which makes sense since they all need height to glide. Anyway, they have the same flight mechanism that flying squirrels have, which is the glide suit made of skin called a patagium. However, their patagia are attached to them slightly different, as it starts between fingers rather than below the wrist like squirrels. And they don't have the special wrist cartilage that flying squirrels do, but their tails do help them maneuver like them. Apparently, they're not as good at gliding as flying squirrels, since their max glide distance is about 150 feet or 46 meters, or about half as far as them. So why does a marsupial and a rodent both have nearly identical ways of gliding? This happened thanks to convergent evolution. Basically, it's thought both groups had the need to avoid predators, while also needing a way to search for food with minimal energy. Thus, they both eventually develop their patagia independently and across the world from each other. Niner. Bats. And finally, we get to the true flyers. Mother Nature must have had favorites because there are over 1400 species of bats, which encompasses around 20% of all mammal species. As far as mammals go, they are the second in number, only two rodents. Such a huge array of species means there are huge differences in behavior, diet, size, features, and abilities. Some mainly eat bugs, some only fruit, some just nectar, and a few exclusively blood. These are mostly nocturnal beings that are spread far and wide across the earth, only absent from extremely cold regions. The biggest of the bunch has a wingspan of over 5 feet or 1.5 meters wide, while the smallest has only a 6 inch or 15 centimeter wingspan. By the way, that small bat is not even an inch and a half or 4 centimeters long, and can weigh as little as 1 16th of an ounce or 2 grams. This makes it one of the smallest mammals of all time. Some bats have a cute dog looking face, while some look like abominations out of a horror movie. Some bats have large ears and can use echolocation to get a better idea of their surroundings, while some have small ears and can't use echolocation. And no, they're not blind. In fact, they have excellent eyesight. 
But you get the point. There are tons of bats, all with differing bodies and abilities. Some of these species should just be given another name besides bats since they're so different. Now why can they truly fly when so many other animals cannot? They have patagia like flying squirrels and sugar gliders, but it's set up completely different in them. Bats have very thin, long, and flexible arm, hand, and finger bones. Their finger bones stretch all the way through their patagia at a few points on each wing. This gives them more control in the air. Their patagia is incredibly thin and travels along the tips of their finger bones, down past their feet, and meeting in the middle of their tail bones. Each wing is basically like a big, light palm of their hand that is connected to the side of their body. Their wings have muscles connected to their shoulders that keep the skin tight, which is better for flight. How do they get enough energy to fly? Their veins are designed to actively boost the flow of blood, unlike other mammals. They also have about double the amount of oxygen in their blood, and hearts that are about three times larger relative to other mammals. And some bats can maintain an insane heart rate of over 1000 beats per minute. They have even more adaptions that help them fly, but you get the idea. All of those things combined to equal the only true mammalian flight. And 10. Humans. Last but not least, humans. Is this a cop-out? I don't think so. No, we can't fly completely on our own, but we don't need to. Our big old brains figured out several ways of how to take to the skies over the course of hundreds of years. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this since this channel focuses on animals, but I will give a quick general overview on the history of human flight. All the way back in ancient China we had thought about taking to the skies. Some of the first kites were made during this time. Much later, in the 16th century, Leonardo da Vinci drew up sketches of an actual machine capable of flight. These drawings didn't go anywhere at the time, but they laid an important framework for the future. The first true flight finally came over 250 years later when the Montgolfier brothers created the first hot air balloon. But these balloons didn't go very far or fast and had other problems like lack of control. Another almost 30 years went by until aerodynamics were starting to become understood. A man named George Cayle was the first to describe the four forces of flight and create the first unpowered fixed-wing human glider. Forty more years go by and the first controllable powered airship is made, known as the dirigible. The first airships were steam-powered, but 20 years later the much better combustion engine started to be put into airships. Finally, this takes us to 1903, when two brothers from Ohio created the world's first controlled and powered plane. You might have heard of them. They were named the Wright Brothers. Anyway, their plane had two wings, one above the pilot and one below. It used a gasoline-powered combustion engine, and looked very bare-bones compared to today's aircraft. The longest flight with that prototype only lasted a minute, but it was the start of a revolution. Shortly after this, helicopters were invented, which used vertical lift instead of the plane's horizontal. And in the last hundred years, aviation exploded with new inventions and technologies being developed at a rapid pace. Jets, rocket ships, and unmanned drones are just some of these, and all with different ways of taking flight. With the unending imagination of humans, who knows what amazing inventions and brand new ways to fly will come next. And there you have it. Ten animals who defied nature and took flight. Well, if you count humans as animals, that is. There are snakes that slither through the air itself, spider and frog paratroopers, the wing-suited mammals, fish and lizard gliders, and more spiders with their wind-powered silk balloons. Each set of animals found a path to fly in their own, mostly unique way. Humans, of course, are dirty copiers that originally tried to duplicate the wings of birds and failed miserably because humans weren't designed to flap wings. Then they copied the parachuting animals, then they copied flying squirrels by making wingsuits. But somewhere along the path, we eventually did find our own way. And what an incredible way it was. 
And, as always, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more daily animal videos.